Hello and welcome to another video brought to you by Rootube. This video will discuss both simple and compound interest. Students are introduced to simple interest in year 9 and then in year 10 are introduced to compound interest. They will then continue to study both types of interest up to year 12 for the maths. Okay, there's a fair few learning objectives for this video. The first one is to understand how simple interest is calculated. The second one is to be able to calculate interest using the simple interest formula. The third one is to be able to determine the rate of interest based on the interest earned, and we're going to use uh, the CAS calculator to help us do that. The fourth one is to understand how compound interest is calculated. The fifth one is to be able to apply the compound interest formula to calculate the total amount. The second last one is to be able to calculate interest using the compound interest formula. And the final one is to be able to use the compound interest formula with different time periods. All right, let's begin by having a look at simple interest. So simple interest is a type of interest that is calculated on the amount either invested or borrowed. Some key terms that are needed to understand simple interest. So the first one is the principal, which we use a capital P to represent the principal. Um, that is the amount of money either borrowed or invested. Okay, so it depends on the context of the question. The interest rate, which we use a lowercase r, it is the percentage rate of interest. Now it's important to note this can be yearly and is often yearly but in some cases it will be multiple times per year. Time, which we use a lowercase t to represent um, the time, is the number of years for which the principal is borrowed or invested. So essentially how long does your um, loan or investment go for or last. Interest, which we use a capital I to represent, which is the amount of interest accrued over a given time period. And most importantly, the formula for calculating a simple interest is I equals PRT over 100. And you might say, well, where's the over 100 come from? And that comes from the interest rate because the interest rate is always written as a percentage. So PRT, so P times R times T. So your principal multiplied by your interest rate multiplied by the time over 100 will equal your interest. All right, so this is your simple interest formula. And the total to be repaid is the amount that you borrowed plus the interest. All right, let's have a look at our first simple interest example. So calculate the simple interest payable. Now it's really important that you sort of understand or be able to identify what you're actually being asked in the question. So simple interest, all right, is the first thing that we need to work out. So even if we weren't told that this is a simple interest example, if you just read the question, you should know that you should be using the simple interest formula as opposed to the compound interest formula, which we'll get to in a second. So calculate the simple interest payable on an investment of $120,000 invested at 2.5% per annum for four years. Now per annum just means per year, so once a year. So now for simple interest, we know that our formula is going to be PRT over 100. Okay, so our I, our interest is PRT over 100. So our principal is how much is invested, which is our 120,000. Our R is our rate of interest, which is 2.5, and our time is four. So essentially, we just need to substitute those values into the formula and then use a calculator to assist with the calculation. So we've now got I equals, so it's now gonna be 120,000 multiplied by our rate, which is 2.5. Now you're not putting 2.5%, because the formula accounts for the fact that it's a percentage already. So it's just 2.5 multiplied by four over 100, okay? And that should give us an answer once you put it in the calculator of $12,000. So the simple interest payable on that investment is $12,000. All right, let's have a look at our second simple interest example. So find the annual interest rate. Okay, so now this question is gonna look a little bit different to the previous one we need to find the annual interest rate, which is our little r. So find the annual interest rate when $5,000 earns $150 interest over two years. All right, so once again, simple interest, so let's write down the formula. So we've got I equals PRT over 100. Now, do we have our principal? Yes, we have our principal. We know how much was invested. 
Now, do we have our rate? Well, no, that's the whole idea of the question, seeing, it's a, seeing as it said, find the annual interest rate. So our R is gonna be the unknown. Now, this 150 interest, that's actually our I value. Okay, so we've already been given how much interest we are going to make. And then our two years becomes our T. So our R is the only thing that's unknown. So now let's substitute the values into the formula. So it's now 150 equals, because we know how much interest we're going to make, is equal to 5,000 multiplied by R, we don't know what it is, multiplied by 2, all over 100. Okay, so then now, hopefully you'll have use of the CAS calculator. You can just chuck that straight into the calculator with the solve function. So we've got 150 equals 5,000 multiplied by R multiplied by 2 over 100 comma R. And that'll give you the rate of interest or the annual interest rate. Okay, so therefore our R should be 1.5 and we know it's always as a percentage. So therefore it's 1.5%. So annual interest rate, when we invest $5,000, when it earns $150 interest in two years, the annual interest rate is 1.5 or 1.5%. All right, now moving our attention to compound interest. So compound interest is a type of interest that is paid on a loan or earned on an investment, which is calculated not only on the initial principal, but also on the interest accumulated during the loan or the investment period. Okay, so that second sentence is the clear difference between simple and compound interest. So let's have a look at an example. So $100 compounded at 10% per annum for two years. So in year one, we find 10% of 100, and therefore we have $110. But then at year two, we're no longer using $100 as the principal, we're now using the new value, which is 110. So then now it would be a 10% of 110, which is 100 and, oh sorry, which is 11, which therefore, increases the value to 121. So that means the compound interest is 21. So in the first year, the interest accrued was $10. In the second year, it was $11 and so on. Now the total amount in, a, in an account using compound interest for the given number of time periods is given by the following formula. So A, which is the amount, equals P bracket one plus R over 100, all to the power of N. Okay, and I'm gonna go through what each of those um, values mean in or the, the letters mean it in a second. So the principal P, which is the amount borrowed or invested, so the same as our simple interest. Once again, R, lowercase r, is the rate of interest, so the percentage applied to the principal per period of investment. So you'll notice R is already over 100. Okay, so that's why, because it is a percentage. The periods N, okay, is the number of time periods the principal is invested for. Okay, so it's a number of time periods, not necessarily the, the number of years, it's the number of time periods. So depending on how often um, the interest is paid will depend on the number of time periods. And the A is the total amount of the investment. And then to work out the total interest, now this is really important when we get to uh, the compound interest Example right at the end of the video. Okay, so to calculate the compound interest, we need to calculate A first, which is using the uh, formula above, and then we need to subtract the principal. So that is actually working out how much compound interest you have accrued. All right, let's have a go at our first compound interest example. So determine the amount. Okay, so we need to work out the amount. So we're going to be working out our value of A after five years when $4,000 is compounded annually at 8%. Okay, so like we did with simple interest, let's actually write down the values of what we have. All right, so our job, we need to work out A, so that's the unknown. Five years is going to be our number of time periods because it's calculated annually, so therefore five is going to be N. $4,000 is going to be P, that's our principal. And then 8% is our R value. Okay, so now what we can do, we can write down our compound interest formula. So we've got A 
equals P, 1 plus R over 100, all to the power of N. And now we can just substitute the values of what we know. So we know that P is 4,000. We know it's going to be 1 plus R over 100, which is now 8 over 100, all to the power of N, which is 5. And we now put that into the calculator, which should give us 5,877.312 and so on. Now with finance, we know it's always the two decimal places and include your dollar sign. So it should be 5,877 and 31 cents. So that's the amount that that will be worth. That's not the amount of interest accrued. Okay, and we'll get to that in a couple of the next examples. That is the amount that that investment is now worth. So it was worth 4,000, then after five years, it's going to be worth $5,877.31. All right, let's have a look at another example for compound interest. So Bob's investment of $4,000 is compounded at 8% per annum over five years. Determine the amount he will have after five years if his interest is paid monthly. Now that paid monthly is super, super, super important to this question. Okay, so let's once again work out what we know. Okay, so we know that our P, the investment was $4,000. That was given in the first few words of the question. Now let's have a look and work out, well, do we know N? Do we know our number of time periods? So some of you might say it's five, okay? Because it says over five years. But it's really important, like I said before, that word monthly, or sorry, the fact that it's telling you that the interest is paid monthly tells you that the number of time periods is not five, okay? It means that the interest is gonna be paid each month for five years, okay? So what we need to do is we need to convert well, not convert, but we need to multiply the 5 by 12 to give us 60. Okay, so the number of time periods, so essentially how many times is the interest going to be paid? What's going to be paid monthly, which is 12 times per year, over 5 years. So N should be 60. And our R value, very easy to look at R and work out that. Yep, okay, R is the percentage, which is 84 but remember, that is it. That is the percentage per annum, okay, per year. But the interest is paid monthly, so that is no longer our R value. Our R value is now, we need to divide it by 12 because it's paid monthly to give us 0 0.7. Now we have the valuable uh, figures and numbers to then apply into the formula. So we might just, I'll put the formula over here. So we've got A equals P and then one plus R over 100, all to the power of N. Let's substitute the values in. So P is going to be 4,000 and then it's gonna be one plus our R value is 0 0.7 over 100 all to the power of 60, because there are 60 months in five years, essentially, the number of time periods are 60. And then we put that in the calculator and we should get an answer of 6,078.945 and so on. Once again, two decimal places and the dollar sign, six, oops, 6,078. 6,078 and 95 cents. So that means the amount that he will have after five years, if the interest is paid monthly, Bob will have $6,078 and 95 cents. All right, let's have a look at our third and final compound interest example. So calculate the amount of interest. All right, calculate the amount of interest earned after four years on an investment of $18,000 invested at 3% per annum, compounded annually to the nearest cent. Okay, so we highlight all the important parts of the question. So we need to work out the amount of interest. We'll get to that in a second. Earned after four years 
So four years, it's going to be that's going to be our n value. And the reason why it is is because it's compounded annually. So it's once per year. The previous question it was compounded monthly. That's why we had to multiply. Okay, so this one we're confident that n is going to be four. Our r is three percent, and our p, our principal is eighteen thousand dollars. So here we go now. Let's write down our formula. So a is equal to p, and then one plus r over a hundred all to the power of n. Let's substitute what we have. We've got 18,000 and then 1 plus r, which is 3, over 100, all to the power of 4, which is our n value. And then now we put that straight in the calculator and we get an answer that looks like 20,259. 0.158 and so on. Again, always two decimal places. So we have 20,259 and 16. And some students will stop there. Now, what's wrong with our final answer? Okay, now in the question, we were asked to calculate the amount of interest, not the, not the amount that the investment would now be worth. We are asked for the amount of interest. So if we remember from the very start of the video, we had to calculate our interest when we have our compound interest, we need to use the formula I equals A minus P. Okay, so we've calculated A in the part that we've just done. So our A value is gonna be 20,259.16, and we need to subtract our principal, which is what we had in the question, which is gonna be $18,000. So then the amount of interest that this person or in that we've earned in this question is going to be that value, A value minus the P, which should give us 2,259 and 16 cents. That's why it's super important to understand what the question's asking. Is it asking you to work out or calculate the amount that the investment is worth or the amount of interest earned over a certain time period. In this case, it was asking for the amount of interest, so therefore we needed that second step. So the final answer should be this one here. The amount of interest is 2,215, sorry, 2,259 and 16 cents. All right, and let's finish off the video just with a comparison question between simple and compound interest. So a car enthusiast borrows $120,000 to buy a classic car and has two options for loans. Okay, the first option offers 7% per annum simple interest, and the second option offers 6.2% per annum compound interest compounding annually. Well, we like seeing compounded annually because it makes the question a little bit simpler for us. We don't have to do anything in terms of multiplying to find the number of time periods, and we don't have to do anything to the percentage, uh, the uh, interest rate to work out the percentage per compounding period because it's all compounded annually. Now, our task is to calculate the amount of interest to be paid with both options after three years. So let's start with part A and we're gonna start with option one. So let's work out the amount of interest, not option A, it should be option one. So we know we are using the simple interest formula. So I equals PRT over 100. Then we can substitute the values in. So P is $120,000 multiplied by the interest rate, which is 7%, and then multiplied by three because it's working it out after three years, which I've just circled in the question, all over 100. We pop that in the calculator and we should be given a nice answer of 25,200. So we, or the car enthusiast, will be paying $125,200 uh, $25, worth of interest, as well as the principal that he needs to pay back. Now, let's move on to option two, and let's work out how much interest he will be paying back under that option. So we're now using the compound interest formula. So we now have A equals P, 1 plus R over 100 all to the power of n. 
Now P is 120,000. And then one plus R in this case is 6.2 for option two over 100. And the time period is once again, I'll just circle it in green, should be three. We put that in the calculator and that should give us a value of 143,732 and 44 cents. Now you might say, gee, that's a lot of interest to pay. Okay, remember with compound, the, the compound interest formula, that formula that we just wrote down, that doesn't work out the amount of interest. That works out the amount of the loan. Okay, so remember to work out the amount of interest, it's gonna be A minus P. Okay, so we just worked out A, so it's gonna be 143,732.44 minus the principal, which is 120,000. And that will give us the interest for option two, which should be 23,000. 732 and 44 cents, which is a much better comparison between option one and option two. Now that's part A done, let's proceed to part B or question B. Now, which are the, which are the loans should the car enthusiast choose and why? All right, so we need to say or state which loan to use and why. So now remember, it's important to not always go with the higher values better or the lower values better. It always depends on the context of the question. So for example, in a context of this question, the car enthusiast is borrowing money, okay? So he needs to obviously pay back that money. So he wants the value that is lowest. So he wants to pay less interest back clearly. If it was an investment, then you want the interest to be as high as possible because then you're going to receive that money. You're gonna get that back, okay? So it's really important to understand the context of the question. Is it an investment or is it a loan? If it's a loan, you always wanna pay back less interest. If it's an investment, you always wanna get back more interest, okay? So in this specific question, which are the loans? So the loans, should the car enthusiast choose and why? Well, the car enthusiast should choose option two as as it's cheaper. They're still both gonna pay back the 120,000, but in option one, they're gonna pay back 25,200 worth of interest, and in option two, they're gonna pay back $23,732.44. So therefore, option two is better, as it's the cheaper option. Thanks again for watching another video brought to you by Rootube. Feel free to like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you next video.